And it is now my great privilege to introduce Eduardo Peñalver, the 22nd president of Seattle University. Please welcome President Peñalver. Good morning. Let me begin by offering my heartfelt congratulations to our graduates. Members of the class of 2023, finishing college is no small feat, even in the best of times. During your time in college, you face challenges and disruptions unlike any most of us have seen in our lifetimes. And despite the challenges, here you are today. And I congratulate you. But I, I have to, before I go on, I have to say, I, you know, I'm, um, I know it's, it's 11.40, which is like the middle of the night for undergraduates. So, <laughs> class of 2023, congratulations. Come on, let me hear you. All right. Okay, so that was just a warm up. You know, none of you got here alone. So I'd like to take a moment to ask our graduates to join me in thanking and congratulating the parents, spouses, supporters, mentors, and friends who are here today, without whom you would not be who you are or where you are today. Let's give them a round of applause. I'd also like to add my thanks and congratulations to the faculty, staff, and administration of Seattle University uh, over the past few years you have persevered in the face of the same challenging circumstances that have tested our graduates, and we've all been benefited tremendously from your tenacity and inventiveness, so thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Seattle University aspires to be one of the most innovative and progressive Jesuit and Catholic universities in the world, a place where innovation meets humanity. Class of 2023, the most important way we achieve these audacious goals is through the impact and success that you will achieve. You are students who today become our graduates. As Ignacio Elacuria, the former rector of the Jesuit University of Central America, said in his 1982 speech at Santa Clara commencement, even as we aim to transform the world around us, Jesuit universities understand that it's our students who are the immediate instruments of that transformation. And so Seattle University's mission statement therefore wisely commits us to empowering our students to become leaders for a just and humane world. A just and humane world. We throw the word justice around a lot on our campus, and yet justice is an opaque and contested concept. It's hardly self-defining. We sometimes see justice used as a synonym for retribution or vengeance. This is the version of justice that Toby Keith and Willie Nelson are invoking in their unforgettable classic of country music. You know the one, Beer for My Horses. As they say, Grandpappy told my pappy Back in my day, son, a man had to answer for the wicked that he done. And they continue, justice is the one thing you should always find. You gotta saddle up your boys. You gotta draw a hard line. Justice on, on this view and in their words involves rounding up all them bad boys and hanging them high in the street. This conception of justice as righteous vengeance is one with which we are all too familiar. Versions of it proliferate across our political spectrum with the specific object of vengeance or means of carrying it out varying based on the perceived injustice to be remedied. The righteous zeal for vengeance often goes along with the conception of justice as all or nothing. It con confidently views justice as something that we can fully capture in a tight box constructed from rigid rules and simple slogans. And yet, the boxes in which we would confine justice share all the imperfections of the crooked human timber from which we've fashioned them. 
with our efforts distorted by the messiness of human institutions and by the limitations of our own comprehension, we find that justice is something that continually resists our full and final understanding and articulation. And this leads me to a different conception of justice, one with deep roots in the Jesuit Catholic tradition of social justice, justice as encounter or engagement with our fellow human beings. As Pope Francis has made clear, true engagement or encounter requires mutual recognition of our shared human dignity and a commitment to dismantling unjust structures that undermine that dignity. And as the Argentine philosopher Enrique Dussel has observed, a genuine encounter also involves recognizing the ultimate mystery and complexity of human beings. And it's from within this tradition of justice as social and relational that Pope Francis has called on us to resist the toxic polarization that pervades our political discourse and to work instead to promote genuine human engagement and dialogue even across our differences. In his 2015 speech to a joint session of the US Congress, Pope Francis lamented the simplistic reductionism that characterizes so much contemporary discourse and that results in a knee-jerk tendency to categorically label people as good or evil, the righteous or sinners. This tendency towards dualism lends itself to the dismissal of those with whom we find ourselves in disagreement as beyond redemption and unworthy of our engagement. Understanding justice through the lens of encounter and engagement challenges us to resist the urge to judge and dismiss those with whom we differ. It invites us to collaborate more broadly, to bring our best ideas about justice into conversation with the best ideas of others, testing them against the messy complexity of actual human situations. This relational conception of justice reminds us that we always have something to learn from our disagreements. It cautions us that our adversary today may be our colleague or ally tomorrow. And that recognition in turn encourages us to exhibit a degree of humility in asserting our conception of justice or in assessing its applicability to a particular situation. In seeking to empower leaders for a just and humane world, our hope at Seattle University is to be a place where true encounter is possible, a place where relationships across our many differences both enrich and challenge us. As you receive your degrees today, today my hope for you is that your Seattle University education has taught you not to be dispensers of vengeance or the purveyors of facile slogans. Instead, my hope is that the education that you've received at Seattle University has helped you to become experts at engagement and encounter, that it's helped you to become connoisseurs of complexity and mystery, leaders who are skilled in the art of inviting others into vitally important conversations about justice, listening and learning from them, building relationships, and in the process, advancing our world toward more just and humane possibilities. Members of the class of 2023, once again, Congratulations.